So Michael is done with the Yankees, who have taken a 5-4 lead on the Diamondbacks. So as soon as that game is over, Michael will join us. Peter's off because of the holiday. So I'm flying solo here with Robert Sala. It's now time for the Robert Sala Report, brought to you by Slomans and Infinity.com. It's just me, Coach. Hopefully you can handle just Don LaGreca. Hopefully it's enough for you. <laughs> hey, Don. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Um, I mean, I, I know it's tough to, to lose games, especially, again, to the New England Patriots. So just play pop psychologist because that's part of your job as a head coach, having to deal with the psyche of your team of not only a, 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 another loss but just another loss to New England. Is it going to be difficult as your team like struggles to find it here early on in the season to try to keep everybody together and not get too down on themselves? No, there, there's always the disappointment of losing. I mean, it's, I feel like every Monday in the NFL, there's 16 teams that feel like they've, uh, that the world ended, and then there's 16 teams that feel like their, their world is just beginning. So, and then it resets at the following Monday. But uh, we got a group of competitors, uh, a lot of guys who just want to win. Um, and, uh, and I know that uh, we'll bounce back and, and continue to work with the, uh, with the passion that I know our guys work with. All right. Obviously, the topic of conversation, as it is every week, is with the play of Zach Wilson. You've defended him. You still believe in him. What What do you see that the rest of the world just doesn't seem to see in the kid? You know, it, it's easy to look at a box score. Um, you know, dissecting the tape and trying to figure out where we can be better, not only him, but as coaches and and, and as players around him. You know, we're, and then of course, and I, and I get it, you know, like practice is practice. Uh, you know, the practice, the great practice doesn't always translate to uh, great play on Sunday, but it does let you know whether or not a guy's trending in the right direction. And, and Zach's practices, his preparation, even his demeanor on game day is a heck of a lot better than it was a year ago. He's still continuing to improve. And then as an offense, you know, Don, it's, um, you know, we designed an offense over the course of this offseason, OTAs and training camp for for Aaron, and uh, and so now we're all adjusting on the fly and trying to find this identity within the within this current group, and uh, and I think we're all we're all working together to try mm-hmm. to find out what's best for us uh, in this moment. And um, you know, we knew there was going to be hiccups along the way with Aaron at quarterback, and now there's just those same hiccups are are uh, are showing up with uh, with this adjustment that we're trying to make and mm-hmm. everyone's working relentlessly hard to to get on the same page and to figure out who we are and uh and I think uh, with every passing week we're getting a little bit closer we're 3 weeks into a very long season and um you know we've played three really really good football teams and we've got another one coming up this week and uh, the the biggest thing is to get back in here today find out what we did wrong See where we can get better, make the schematic adjustments that fit fit, this, fit the mold of uh, the direction we want to go with this group, and um, and see if we can get better. Now, I'm like all the, the fans, all right? I've watched football for a long time, but I can't possibly know it as well as you. But when, when I see it, and just try to walk me through it, because I was at the game yesterday, it, that it just seems like he's holding the ball too long at times, just not seeing the field. Is, is is that the way you look at it, that there's things that are being missed that he's just not seeing? Or is he being confused by the defense? Why does it look like there were times where he had time but just was not getting rid of the ball? There, there's going to be times, and every quarterback goes through it, where um, they might hold it a hitch longer. Uh, they might they might be waiting on a kid, uh, one of his teammates to get open just a hitch longer than he needs to. But it wasn't a consistent theme throughout the day. You know, um, there was a lot of things that could have done. We done. We could have done a lot better for him. Uh, run game wasn't nearly as good as it needed to be. Um, you know, some of the. Uh, you know, we had opportunities to um, be a lot more productive on third down, uh, which has been a, a detriment to our to our uh, team right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of little things that are putting him in very difficult situations. Uh, you know, we're not efficient enough on first and second down. I talked about it in my press conference, you know, down where I think 50% of our third down opportunities have been 10 yards or more, right. which is an impossible task um, for any quarterback. Um, 
and uh, and especially a quarterback going against New England, who's who's got a, a very formidable, formidable defense. And uh, so there's a lot of things that we can do better, uh, whether it's run game, um, staying ahead of the chains, not losing yards, and giving us a chance to have our run and play action pass system to kind of, uh, to, to, so we can execute the game plan as we see it. But uh, um, and then from a from a player to player standpoint, uh, just just finding ways to make the easy easy plays and catch the ball when thrown to you and gain extra yards when you have the opportunity and. Um, and then for Zach, you know, it, it's never going to be 100%. There, there isn't a quarterback in football that's 100%. Mm. But uh, but he is getting better, and he is seeing the field a lot better. It's just trust, you know, what you see on a play-in and play-out basis and get rid of the football when you need to. Now, to back up everything you said was that drive in the fourth quarter that gets you back into the game. Like It all just seemed to click. He had some big throws. He just looked like a different quarterback. Why? Why did it click on that drive so, and not on the others? You know that, that's a that's a good one, and, and, um, and we, trust me, we 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 came in the uh, uh, meetings today. We talked about that drive, and we went through it all together. And uh, you know, when when he is in rhythm and in the game, he is it is pretty. He's he's pretty damn good. And uh, you know, he um, I thought our old line did a really nice job protecting. He was hitting his back foot and let the ball rip. He threw a honey hole shot uh, to cover two to Lazard on the sideline. Um, you know, all of it looked good, and he was in, he he was he was feeling it. He was seeing it really well. Uh, got the ball to uh, Cobby in the flat immediately, and Cobby made his guy miss. Get it inside the five. Uh, he did a lot of really good things on that drive, and um, you know, and, and and it's why when we took over at midfield with one forty and two timeouts, I, I don't think there was a person on the sideline that thought we weren't going to win that football game. You know, and it just it didn't work out uh, yesterday, but. I do think there was a lot of things in the fourth quarter that we could build off of. Now, you mentioned Nathaniel Hackett had designed an offense for Aaron Rodgers. You lose Aaron Rodgers four plays into the season. So how long could it feasibly take him to put something together that more fits Zach's style? You know, it's um, it, it, it's a good question, Don. And it's, you know, we, we were expecting to have adjustments uh, and hiccups along the way, even with Aaron at quarterback. I don't think... Anyone in this in this building thought it was just going to be a smooth transition. New coordinator, new players on offense, new quarterback, new play caller, new O line coach, new quarterback coach. There's a lot of new new receivers coach. There's a lot of new, and so we knew that there was going to be some adjustments along the way, even with Aaron. And so this is just a another wrench, you know, where uh, you're doing it on the fly. What's the timetable? I I wish I had a crystal ball. Um, but I know that guys are we're all working tirelessly as coaches and players and. Um, with every passing day and every rep we get, we're, we're, I do feel like we're getting a lot closer to the answers that we need to come up with to, to become more efficient on offense. Now, the line needs to be better. You've, you've talked about that. There were times Zach didn't have a lot of time. And the running game, you know, 37 yards just isn't going to cut it. How much of that is the amount of men in the box, the ability of the Patriots to stop the run, or, or how much is it on you just not getting the run blocking you need? Um. You know, a lot of credit to New England. I mean, they they uh, they play their five down front, and they're they're big and strong on the inside, and they just they make it hard to move you. Um, I do think we left a lot of yards out there from a uh, um, from both a uh, player standpoint and a schematic standpoint. Um, you know, we can be a lot better, a lot more efficient, obviously, but uh, you know, it's things we got to get better at, and and the reality is you you gain more yards in the run game, and this is going to sound odd, but you gain more yards in the run game by converting third downs because you get more opportunities to run the ball, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And our third down uh, production has been putrid over the past, uh, over the course of the season. I think we're last. Um, and we're just not giving ourselves a chance to string together good drives. We did in the fourth quarter. We, we had that 13-play, 87-yard drive or whatever it was. Um we did have one in the first half where I think we called eight consecutive runs. We were staying ahead of the chains. We were getting positive yards. We had a good fourth down conversion. Um, you know, so there's there we're showing signs of the level of consistency that we need has has not been there. But uh, but I, I like I said, I feel very confident that we're moving in the right direction. It's just I know it's not happening as fast as everybody wants, but uh, but it's 
it's so early in the season and uh, so a lot of progress is uh, to be made. Talking to Robert Sala, our weekly spot here on the Michael K Show. Uh, defensively, it, it, I, I use this in the open, Coach, that you can't get on a defense for allowing 13 points. But can I get on the defense for not getting a sack? Can I get on them for not turning the Patriots over or, or getting off the field on third down? Because it did feel like the Patriots moved the ball a little bit better than I thought they would against this Jet defense. Is that fair? Uh, fair. Uh, the sacks, I'd say unfair. I'll okay. explain that one later. Uh, you know, they definitely came out and moved the ball uh, better than we would have liked. Again, third down conversions early. Uh, we did have the busted coverage. That was a uh, big six-yard touchdown, uh, which was a majority of their uh, a big chunk of, the, uh, of their yards. Um, but in the second half, I thought the defense was outstanding. Third down defense was outstanding. Uh, run game defense was outstanding. The uh, defense continually got the ball back for the offense. Um, you know, the offense had a lot of three and outs, so the defense going out there over and over and over again and punching blow for blow, I, I thought they did a great job. Uh living up to the, the the idea that our our job is to go get the ball back for the offense. What they do with it is is whatever they do with it, the job of the defense is to get the ball back for the offense. Now we had a couple of really good opportunities to get some takeaways. I think uh I think uh Mac threw had about four turnover worthy throws. We just couldn't come down with it. I think Michael Carter had one. Uh Jordan White had, had one. I think Amos could have had one. Uh, there, so there were some opportunities there. We just didn't come out. We just didn't come away with it. And we've got to, we got to figure out how to come home with those. You know, that's if we're truly going to be a great defense. Uh, those are those are the the plays that I'm always going to challenge our guys on to, to to come home with those and flip the field. Um, as far as the sacks go, you know, it's the second week in a row. They're they're just not letting us get to them. The Mac did a really nice job getting rid of the ball. Uh, if you go back and watch the tape, you know he was. He was throwing the checkdowns before the checkdowns were even getting around, getting their head around the to, to look because we were winning so fast up front. Um, so really good uh, credit to him. I, I think he was some like 15 or 29. He, he was ditching a lot of balls because he didn't want to get hit, but he also because of that uh, almost threw us the ball a couple of times. So, um, but again, credit to him, credit to to, uh, to the quarterback and and the and the things that he was doing to get get the ball out of his hands from a sack perspective. Mm. But uh, but overall, I do think uh, I think our defense played a, a really good game overall, and uh, you can't ask for much when when you, uh, especially in that fourth quarter. I thought they did a really nice job giving our offense a chance to uh, to win the football game, and, and it didn't happen. But uh, but defense defense did a nice job. You know, you you went through it last year with the with the Mike White stuff and the team's comments about Zach. I mean, what did you learn from last year to not allow any of the negativity to kind of creep in this year? Because you see it. I, I've covered football teams where the defense feels like they're doing more than they have to because the offense is struggling or even vice versa. Did you learn anything from last year that can help you make sure that that divide doesn't become a, an issue as the season wears on? You know, I, I don't know if there was a divide last year. When you, when you say divide, you're, I'm assuming that you think the offense was pissed at the defense and defense pissed at well, offense. Well, no, no, actually, what I'm at. talking about the divide that seemed to be created around Zach. You know, so or just any oh. adversity back and forth. Like, just it felt like they bailed on Zach to support Mike White. It just, it, it from afar, it just seemed like the room kind of got ugly against Zach. How do you stop that from happening to the offense or to, to happen to Zach again? No, again, another, another fair question, Don. I, I don't think that that's the thing is like whatever the, the perception and narrative outside the building is, um, isn't always necessarily the reality. You know, it's yes, did they wear shirts of another quarterback? Well, the quarterback was starting. They're trying to get him excited so he can go produce. It wasn't necessarily, okay, screw Zach. It's just like, all right, you're our guy. Let's roll. And, um, the, you know, so it wasn't a reflection on Zach as much as it was, hey, let's get Mike White all excited to go play with confidence so we can move the ball. Mm. Um, guys like Zach. Zach is a good young man. He works his tail off. He stands for everything you want out of a human. You'd want your daughter to marry the, the, the young man. He's a tremendous young man, and he puts in all the work, and he says all the right stuff, and he's a great teammate. 
so these no one in the locker room dislikes Zach or lacks confidence in Zach. So, yes, I get what it looked like on the outside, mm-hmm. but it was not the case. On- oh, but um, it's it could be two different things. I, I'm a very likable guy. Believe me, they'd hate me if I was the quarterback of the New York Jets because I would be – God awful at it because well, I, I think these guys just want to win, Robert. Right? I mean, I'm not going to rip those guys. Just For sure. they realize they've got stats. They've got a short. It could all be over in one day, right? That's the way these professional athletes have to think of things. So, yeah, they can they can love them. They can have them be the best man at their wedding, but they're going to want to gravitate to the guy that gives them the best chance to win. A hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right, Dom. But like, I think the difference between if you're if you're going to ask me from a team confidence mm-hmm. level with regards to that, the difference between this year and last year is in the day to day operations. Zach, in terms of, um, you know, when you're at practice and and you're looking at a quarterback and you're watching him go play to play, that his his accuracy, his decision making, his foot, his pocket presence. His command of the huddle, everything is so much more improved over the uh, over what it was a year ago. Now, does it matter because it needs to translate to Sunday? And do we need to win to for people to really buy into that that theory? Uh, yeah, that's that's obviously. Mm-hmm. But I think players in this building see that, and they have a lot of confidence in them. Now, are we getting the stats that we want? Not yet. Uh, but I do think guys are confident in the fact that he is a way different dude than he was a year ago and that if we stay the course and we continue to find out what we need to get done from a schematic standpoint, uh, we'll start seeing the uh, the uh, statistical production. Now, we ask you this every week, but are we any closer to having another quarterback come in here? No, like I said, Zach's our quarterback. Um, Timmy's the backup, and... Um, uh, and, and that's the way we're rolling. Now, this could be completely unfair, but just to play pop psychologist, is part of the motivation of not bringing in a veteran because of the fact that now that's who the fans can call for. That's who the players maybe can start making comments about maybe he should play. Is that part of the motivation why you haven't brought a veteran in? No, no, not at all. Because, you, you, again, like – Outside noise is uncontrollable. If you allow it, whether you're a player or not, like it's it's no different than now. I mean, you guys are, you know, everyone's clamoring for a veteran backup and and all that stuff. That it, so there, there's always going to be noise. Um, it doesn't matter. He could we can say the sky is blue and half the people will say no, it's green. The other half will say it's blue. So there's always going to be noise. You just got to turn your phone off and ignore it and stay focused and keep the main thing the main thing. So. Um, the, the amount of noise will be no different uh, whether there's a veteran here or not. Now, the end, at the end of the day, we've got to produce and we've got to find ways to win. Now, you had said in your press conference today that Zach is not the reason you lost. But can you get to a point, it sounds like you think that you can, that he can win you a game? I say that one more time, Don? I'm sorry. You said that in your press conference yeah. today that he's not the reason you lost the game. But when when can we get to a point that he's the reason you win a game? No, that's fair. Um, you know, it's uh, like I said. There's um, you know, in that last and and here's how I feel. Like we had the ball with, at midfield. Like I said, minute forty, two timeouts. I I do believe that the next time we get those opportunities, I I think he's going to do it. You know, he he he's proven that he can move the ball down the field. There's a consistency obviously with the entire offense, but, um, you know, from, from coaches always, we'll always look inward and we'll always stay from coaching all the way down. We just got to find ways to be more efficient and find ways to put everybody in position to, uh, to be more successful. And then the player, from a player standpoint, when you're in those positions, you go make the play. And, uh, um, I think Zach is, is at the doorstep. We just got to keep kicking that door down and, and, uh, and when we break through, it's going to be awesome. All right, so what's the plan against Kansas City? Looks like they kind of found their mojo against Chicago yesterday. Yeah, they look good. I'm about to flip the film on now. I, I, I buzzed through some of it, but uh, another really freaking good defense. I think they're, they rank top 10 in defense, and, uh, uh, and they played some really good offenses along the way. Um, you know, offensively, obviously they have one of the best quarterbacks in the entire game. He, he's, he's a magician with the ball on his hand. Again, an, an, another tremendous challenge, uh, both offensively and defensively. If you had to bet, you think uh, Taylor Swift's at uh, MetLife on Sunday? <laughs> Didn't you just?
just do a concert here the uh, a yeah. few, uh, a month ago. And then she was in Kansas City yesterday, uh, yesterday for Kelsey. All of a sudden, uh, she was really excited. So I'm wondering if she's going to travel to MetLife. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Al Michaels talking about uh, how many kids you and Dable have? Did you hear him say that during the uh, the game on Thursday? Did he talk? I, I love Dayball, man. But I, I did not. I didn't hear that one. But. Uh, um... No, Dave's Dave's has a beautiful family, man. So no, it's uh, but I, I didn't hear. Yeah, because um, because Al Michaels brought up how you know Dable's got to go home to six kids, but you know only topped by Robert sala has got seven. We both love chaos. <laughs> I think that's why that's why we enjoy enjoy being here so much. We love the chaos. <laughs> I, I, I I I feel I took my son to uh, his first football game yesterday, and uh, he definitely enjoyed it. Although he's he's not even six yet, so it, it's. It's a lot. I got twins. I, I can't imagine I have five others. I mean, your wife is, is sainthood, I, I'm assuming. You know, I, I always tell people after two, it becomes zone defense. And so it, it's all the same, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eventually, by the time you get to five or six, they're, they're all taking care of one another anyway. At the time, I don't know where the heck any of them are. <laughs> <laughs> is it difficult to – to not take this home. I mean, you live and die as a coach, and every loss and win defines you as a coach. So, how difficult is it to not take it home? It's it's not at all. Be honest with you. Like um, it hurts. You watch the tape. You go through all that. But um, but at the end of the day, those those seven kids are why we do this. And uh, my wife and my seven kids. And so when when I get home and they run up to me and they're giving me hugs and kisses, it's. Uh, all, all that football stuff goes away. Well, what's the age range again? Twelve to two. Well, I thirteen to two. Thirteen. Uh, to birthday two. for one, uh, my. <laughs> now, when I when I pulled up to MetLife to park yesterday, my son just out of nowhere says, "Daddy, you're you're the best dad in the world." When when is that going to stop? Because I treasured it, and I and I know there's going to be a day it's going to stop. It, it, <laughs> how much longer will I have that attitude? Do you think? So so I'll, I'll say this: my oldest will still come greet me at the door my second and third not so much and then the rest of them uh run like little puppies but uh but what, from what i'm told right around 13 14 it's over so i'm still waiting i'm in the same boat as you yeah fishing every moment everybody says just just tre- treasure these moments because once they hit 12 or 13 it's gone so I'm, I'm gonna hold on to it for as long as i can anymore you're the stay away you're embarrassing me dad (laughs) (laughs) and believe me i'm the kind of father that will embarrass him so i'll have my radar up for that (laughs) coach good luck we'll talk to you next week yes sir thank you Don. all right that is the robert sala report brought to you by slowman slowman's has low price home heating oil for all of new york football fans new uh, low prices zero sacrifices for 100 years slowman's has been a staple in home comfort call 1-866- oil deal and infinity.com discover more about the luxury and performance of an infinity qx60 crossover at infinityusa.com or visit your local infinity dealer today so that's robert sala comments thoughts when we come back michael k will also join us when we come back as the yankees pick up a 6-4 victory over the arizona diamondbacks all not great in the bronx either we got to discuss that We're taking you up until 6.30, and it's all happening right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN New York.